and the first step that we need to do is to um, assume a boiling point rise. So, ito yung ating unang gagawin for each effect. Okay. So, by the way, yung boiling point rise sa third effect is, um, nakuha na natin siya, BPR3, that's 43 over 1.8 kasi meron tayong given. But how about this second and third effect? Wala kasi tayong way para makuha dyan. So, yung other, yung other problems, if you would be reading about it, yung BPR nila is nilarapasan nila in terms of yung X. And mas madali siya kasi naging mole fraction or mass fraction na lang siya. But in this case, since I want to show you yung um, pinaka-komplikadong case, so um, I didn't do that, so walang tayong expression. Ang kailangan natin is, i-assume natin based on sa graph. So we go back to this, no, para mas mag-guess nyo itong nangyayari dito. No? Uh, just to give you an idea of the evaporator, kapag meron tayong baseline temperature, and then, di ba, we start with the lowest um, effect dito, which is the vapor chest is 100 degree Fahrenheit. And then, kung nagboboil na yung ating liquor sa gantong temperature, so alam natin na uh, dito siya nagboboil. Okay? Dun sa ating um, third effect. And this is the lowest um, boiling point ng solution na pwede natin na ma-attain. Kasi ito yung, ano, ito yung last effect na. So basically, um, hindi na pwedeng bumaba yung ating solution temperature dito for the second and the first effect. So, tataas lang siya compared din sa ating third effect. Pero, alam naman natin na yung ating steam is um, given at third, ano sabi yun? Um, outlet 380 Kelvin. So, around 380 Kelvin, yun yung ating outlet, um, ayun, at yung ating steam. So, kung convert natin yung ating um, steam into um, degrees Fahrenheit, we could know that yung ating temperature is around 225 so, basically, kung 225 siya, nandito siya banda. Okay? So, knowing these two um, temperatures, yung ating max and then minimum temperatures, we know very well na lahat ng temperature dun sa ating vapor chest in the first and second effect, lahat dito lang siya naglalay sa boundary ng dalawang temperatures na yan. So, what, ano ba yung sense? Ba't ko siya na-explain? Kasi, kung makapansin nyo, we need to assume a boiling point rise in each effect. Now, um, imagine if your effect is, let's say, dun sa first effect natin is, um, ang temperature niya, so we know very well na pinakamataas siya dun sa tatlo kasi you start with the steam eh. So, pag napainitan siya ng steam, mas mataas siya. So, basically, kung ito yung steam temperature natin, pwede yung mag-start tayo dito sa 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 220, uh, knowing naman na pwede nandun yung ating um, temperature. So, now that we've already mentioned about this maximum and then the minimum temperature, alam naman natin for sure na yung ating any temperature would lie in just in between dito sa ating max and then mean temperature. So, um, nandito na yung ating temperatures dun sa ating um, vapor chest effects 1 and 2. So, knowing yung ating effect 1 is sa steam, talaga sa directly nagkakaroon ng um, change in temperature. So, with that, siya yung meron highest, uh, next highest temperature, solution temperature dun sa ating profile. So, let's just use 210. Um, the only way that I can know that is that um, I'm just trying to um, guess. Okay, so for example, I have sodium chloride, and then imagine um, so yon 210 and then sodium chloride. So what could be the final temperature at the outlet liquor? So it starts with with it starts with 10 or 0 0.10. Now if it ends up with 50, you know very well na hindi siya dapat maging ano agad, 20% kasi um, basically kung 0.5 plus 0.1 then divided by um, 2 or something like that or 3 uh, medyo malaki yung 20% so uh, let's just use 15% so yung idea dun is I'm not actually um, you know trying to give you a wild guess or what but imagine nyo lang if you have 10% and then 50%. So, basically, kailangan mo pa ng dalawang intervals in between that para makuha mo yung final outlet temperature. So, yun. So, I'll be trying 15. So, probably magkaroon tayo ng magandang result dito. So, you can try any um, ano, any boiling point, I mean, any concentration na you would like to uh, assume. Basta dapat, um, increasing siya. So, starting from 10 sa feed. So, pwede maging about for example, 18 sa next and then dun sa sunod, naging let's say 24. Okay? So, pwede yung mga ganong case. No? And then with this, um, we know that in the in an assumed value of 0.15, our boiling point rise is 5. So, we could just use this 
so we have uh, the assumed boiling point rise so x and bpr 1 sub 1 is equal to um, 5 over 1.8 that's Kelvin and with the assumed um, concentration so that's simply x sub l1 is equal to 0 0.15 okay and then we assume the second boiling point rise so let's go back here and then let's try different color so using uh, let's say for example dito na tayo sa bandang gitna let's say 180 um, yun kasing 180 is just an assumption kasi syempre medyo gitna na yung ating um, process that's, that's vapor um, evaporator too so let's try using this one and then we project this is sodium chloride okay and then after that um, ano ba yung maganda nating assumption na um, value ng ating concentration too I'll try using uh, this one para sakto siya sa 10 so uh, para doble na lang no so meron tayong 5 BPR and then this one is 10 so that's around 23 I think 23%. So, ayun, medyo from 15 naging 23% na siya. So, uh, ayun lang, um, para maging 10 lang yung ating BPR. It's just that para mas madali siyang isulat. Okay? Pero you can just try, for example, gusto mo is around 34. So, you can do that and then medyo alangan yung sagot mo. So, that's why I'm picking yung ating mga values na medyo sakto. Okay? So, in this case, meron tayong 0.23 and that's 10. Um, BPR. Okay? So that's 10 over 1.8 and we have this x of L sub 2 which is equal to around 0 0.23 then 23 or 23.5 okay so just let's just stick with uh, no, 0.23 so now that we already have this um, syempre assumed lang yan and now we can now proceed with finding our total available temperature. So, pag sinabi natin total available temperature, um, we know very well na each effect has its own um, delta T. Di ba meron tayo before, may explain ako sa inyo na meron tayong Q is equal to UA delta T1. Siyempre, kung meron tayong second effect, meron din yung U, ito yung sub 1. So, meron tayong U sub 2 and then A delta T2. Same way na meron din yung ating 3. Okay. So, if you take all the values of this delta T1, delta T2, and then delta T3, and then you add all the boiling point rise, then you'll be able to get the um, delta T general, okay? So, this is the available temperature, the changes in the all the temperatures that we can get. So, with that notion, let's estimate the temperature differences. So this is our um, general formula for that. So if we need our delta T1, so what you have to do is to um, take delta T and then summation of delta T. Let's take this one. And then we multiply this with the reciprocal of its overall heat transfer coefficient. And then let's divide that with the sum of the reciprocal of all the heat transfer coefficients. So I remember this um, expression para siyang resistances kasi nga dire diretso kasi yung ating um, effects, di ba? So, yun. And then, upon substitution to that value, we will be able to obtain delta T1. But uh, to do that first, we need to find the value of delta T1. Okay, so from this one, we have delta T1 equal lang siya dun sa ating um, lahat ng temperature differences and then plus the summation of BPR. Now, um, remember, sa delta T1, we have the, let's say for example, we have the steam temperature. This is subtracted with the liquor temperature. And then, itong liquor temperature, we know very well na ito is yung ating vapor chest temperature ng effect 1 and then yung BPR1. Okay, so that is delta T1. Okay, now for delta T2, um, diba itong uh, vapor chest 1? would be the vapor that will um, enter as the steam of the second effect. So therefore, ito yung ating magiging um, temperature na ating steam. Pero yung ating second effect, we know that that's TL sub 2, meaning ito na yung ating um, solution, ng, um, final solution with the boiling point rise, kaya it is 1 is TV2, and then plus the, temp the boiling point rise 
of the second effect. So therefore, this is delta T2. And finally, we have TV3. So that's subtracted with TL3. And then again, this TL3 is the TV3 and then plus BPR3. Okay. Now, instead, now if we would be adding all of these, we know very well na uh, we can represent all of this TL1, uh, TL2 in terms of uh, this one na lang. So, ganyan. Gawin natin ganyan. Okay. So, ibig sabihin yan, parang minus nito. Okay. So, with this, we know that TS minus TV1 plus TV1 will be cancelled out, diba? As well as this TV2 and then uh, TV... Where's that one? Actually, this should be TV2. Okay. So, this one is the TV2 and then, yun. So, ang matitira lang sa atin is meron tayong TS and then minus BPR1 minus BPR2 and then minus um, TV3 minus BPR3. Okay? So, ibig sabihin nito, the steam that enters the first effect minus the vapor chest temperature at the last effect and then minus all the sum of this um, vapor, I mean, boiling point rise would equal to this summation of the delta T. So, therefore pala, pwede natin siyang i-relate in a way na um, we'll be using this TS and then TV3. So, instead of using our, our delta T1 kasi wala pa tayo niyan. So, if sabihin nito, we could just use T sub S minus TV sub 3 and then minus all the boiling point rise. And yung lahat ng ating BPR, kung matatanda nyo, is in natin siya based dun sa ating um, mass fraction. Okay. So, in this case, we have the summation of T equal to our TS. And TS is already obtained from this um, solution. So, we have, I think that's 380 point something, 386.1183. So, we have 386.1183 Kelvin. And then we subtract this TV3. So we have 311.2260 and then minus 5 over 1.8, that's BPR1, minus 10 over 1.8, that's BPR2, and then we have 43 over 1.8, so that's BPR3. So what we'll get here is the summation of the available temperature differences. So makukuha natin dito is equal to 42.6701 Kelvin. And now to compute further for delta T1, so gamitin natin itong expression na to, so we can write this as, um, let's have this equal to 42.6701 and then times 1 over U. And then again, kung matatanda nyo, yung U natin is equivalent to 6246 and then we, multi we divide all of this with the reciprocal. So 1 over 6246 plus 1 over 3407 plus 1 over 2271. Okay. So yun. Yun na yung ating delta T1. So therefore, ang ating delta T1, sabihin nito, um, from our mass fraction assumed, ito yung ating expected na delta T1. Assuming na tama yung ating mga temperatures na na-select, no? So, we have 300, I mean, 7.6420 Kelvin. And you'll be doing the same. So, delta T2 and then delta T3. So, um, di ko na siya um, papakita dito since same lang naman procedure. So, you'll be able to get delta T2 uh, equal siya sa 14.0100. And then, for your delta T3, you'll be able to obtain a value of um, 21.0181 Kelvin. Okay? So, with this, uh, meron na tayong values ng ating delta T1, T2, and T3. So, knowing all of this, so let's find all the temperatures. The necessary temperatures. Kasi, kailangan natin yan para makuha natin yung mga enthalpies. Okay. So, starting with T1, I mean, TL1, we know naman na this TL1 is simply the steam temperature minus delta T1. So, with that, uh, pwede natin agad siyang makuha from this. So, yung the rest naman ng procedure is same lang din. So, hindi ko na siya ipapakita talaga ng um, same data. So, we have TS minus delta T1. So, um, upon subtracting, you will be able to obtain a value of 378.4763 Kelvin. So, we know very well naman na itong TL1, uh, TV1 is simply TL1 
this TL1 minus minus our vapor, I mean boiling point rise. So in this case, you have this um, T, uh, this is the TL1, and then you subtract this with the boiling point rise, that's um, 5 over 1.8, so you will be able to obtain a value of 375.6986. Eight six Kelvin, okay, and then we have uh, repeat lang natin yung process for that. So we have for TL two. So that's something like imagine yung steam na papaso sa kanya, which is vapor, vapor um temperature no um from one. So that's simply TV one and then minus ma minus natin yung TV one with our um delta T two. So yun yung ating magiging temperature no ating Decor 2. So, ganun lang siya kasimple. So, that will be equal to, so, if it's TV1, we know na ito ay 375.6986. And then, subtrakan natin siya ng second um, temperature gradient. So, yun. Makukuha natin ngayon ang TL sub 2. So, TL sub 2 is equal to 361.6885 Kelvin. Okay? And then, we proceed our 6. So, and then, we proceed with TV2. So, we know naman na itong TV2 is obtained using the um, boiling point rise. So, 361.6886 minus the boiling point rise in number 2. So, that's 356.1330 Kelvin. Okay. So, kompleto na tayo ng mga temperature profiles natin kasi um, yung ating last effect, uh, nakuha na naman siya dito sa portion na to kasi siya ay given. So, we don't have to proceed with that. So, number 4 is hanapin natin naman ngayon yung enthalpy. So, laging ganun, after mo mahanapin temperature, sunod naman dyan is enthalpy. So, find all the enthalpies. Sama na dito, syempre, yung mga latent heat natin if there is. So, for our first effect, we know na ang kailangan natin is HV1. So, yung ating HV1 is equal to una dun sa temperature or I mean enthalpy. So, una yung ating HV1 is kailangan natin ng enthalpy dun sa vapor chest temperature ng saturation niya. Na temperature, which is yun yung TV1. So, you need to take the um, enthalpy at that point, the vapor enthalpy. So, you will be able to get 2679.6 um, Kelvin, I mean Kelvin, kilojoule per kilogram. Okay. So, um, yun yun yung ating... Um, HV1, and then syempre, kung kailangan natin is mismong yung HV1 na sa final so we need to um, add the sensible heat with this, so multiply this with 1 over 1.8 so you'll be able to get 2684.8333 so by the way, uh, baka ang kataka kayo is bakit kailangan pa natin hanapin tong temperature ng TL1, diba this is one is solution Knowing naman na nag-try na tayo mag-assume ng values dito sa ating Paris Handbook. Kasi diba, um, nag-assume ako first dito is yung 210 degrees Fahrenheit. So, um, 210 degrees Fahrenheit, kung convert natin siya, that's 372. And uh, this one is 378. Um, so, wouldn't be, it be um, better kung yun na lang din natin ilagay natin na values for TL1? So the answer for that is that we stick with the rule na yung atin delta T1 is na obtained from this given BPR. So ang ang goal lang natin dun is to give the value of our BPR, not um, taking the fact na nag-assume tayo ng certain value ng solution. Though yung ating assumption medyo malapit siya, but the fact remains na yung BPR natin is um, temperature-wise, yun lang yung ating kukuhanin, hindi mismo yung ating solution temperature from the assumption. Kukunin pa natin siya based dito sa values natin BPR. Kaya, ito yung ginawa natin. Kasi, um, what if, ano, uh, merong effect yung ating, actually, hindi what if, meron talagang effect. Merong effect kasi yung ating um, overall heat transfer coefficient dun sa ating delta T. Kaya, um, we need to uh, account that in finding our temperature gradient. So, kaya yun yung um, reason ko bakit hindi, hindi tayo nag-assume, I mean, nag-assume tayo, pero hindi natin siya ginamit dito sa ating temperature profiles. Okay? Anyway, so let's move on. So for number uh, for the next one, we know naman uh, this needs our um, latent heat of 
condensation. Bakit? Kasi itong V1 na ito, di ba, vapor siya. So, from this figure, vapor siya. And then, magkocondense yan somewhere here para ma ma-deliver niya yung required heat sa second effect. So, therefore, kailangan natin ng small HV dito. Pero, um, let's just use the saturation temperature and then let's take the values of that latent heat. So, kung mapansin nyo, medyo nagmadali na ako dito sa pagkakompute ng mga HV1, lambda V1. So, hindi na ako gamit ng peri, gamit ko ako ng app na may steam table. So, actually, same lang naman dapat yung maging sagot nyo dyan. So, um, ang hawan ko sa inyo is gamitin yung peri sandbox nyo and then i-check nyo na dapat ganito yung makukuha yung mga sagot. Kasi medyo madami yung, ano eh, yung values talaga na hanapin. Kaya, yon Pero, syempre, um, Either way naman kung tama yung computation yung mga kuha nyo pa rin yung dapat na sagot. So, um, sulat ko lang yung mga the rest. Uh, same concept lang din yung gagawin nyo. Okay, so, kompleto na yung ating mga enthalpies. Kompleto na rin ating temperature profiles. So, ang sulod natin gagawin is magagawa tayo ng uh, material and heat balance. So, Medyo patapos na tayo, pero sana tama yung ating maging sagot. To start with this, we know that the OMB, or overall metal balance natin, is yung feed natin na pumasok, and then kung mapansin nyo, lahat ng vapor lumabas dyan. Though ito pumasok sa second effect, pero lumabas pa rin siya. So V1 goes out, V2 goes out, and then V3, as well as L3. So yung L1 and L2, pumasok siya, pero hindi naman na sila lumabas. Lumabas siya as one um, concentration lang sa L3. So with this, our OMB would be V1 plus V2. So, yun yung ating OMB. And then, we know that this is equal to 13,608. So, ito na yun. Um, L3 and then plus. Let me just use summation V. Sige na nga. Ito na lang. Pwede mga palang kopyahin. Okay. So, yun. Yun ating OMB. And then, for our component, we know very well na yung ating component balance. By the way, ito yung... Um, ito is not part of our trial kasi ang ginagawa natin is nagko-compute tayo basically ng sagot which is obtained lang from the given. So, wala tayong ina-assume dito. So, any any computation na wala kang ina-assume, so, mare-remain yun as tama talaga. Okay. Ang dito yung ina natin is yung sumula sa BPR. So, posible na starting from this, baka mali ating mga sagot dito. Pero ito, and then yung mga nandito, so, tama talaga sila. Anyway, so, we have F and then X sub F that's equal to L and then L3 actually, and then X times X, and then L sub 3. So, with this, we know that that's 13,608, and then we have 10%, and this is equal to L sub 3, and then that's um, 0 0.50. So, we'll be able to get um, L sub 3 here. So, L sub 3 is equal to 2721.6 kilograms per hour, and then, of course, kung gusto natin kuhanin yung ating um, summation ng ating vapors, so we have all the V1, V2, V3. Yun lang naman yung balance nito. So, um, that will be equal to um, 10,886.4 kilograms per hour. Um, actually, ito na yung numerator ng ating magiging stem economy kasi V1 plus V2 plus, plus V3 na ito eh. Okay? So, mamaya pa naman yun. Okay. So, we proceed with the next. So, heat balance naman. Ito na yung medyo matrabaho tayo, no? Okay? So, we start with, um, ito medyo pasok natin para, yan, maganda. And then, let's try doing the heat balance. And by the way, um, kung bakit heat balance yung gagamitin ko dito, is that, um, wala naman tayong available na enthalpy concentration diagram ng ating sodium chloride. So, if ever meron, ito akong kapakahirap mag-heat balance dito, ba? But anyway, mahirap pa rin yun kasi kailangan natin maghanap ng mga um, assumptions natin as well as yung mga boiling point rise. Ito, actually, yung pinakamahirap is yung boiling point rise kasi wala tayo idea kung ano ba yung values niya. But anyway, so, ayun. Uh, so, BPR, or I mean, heat balance. So, alam naman natin from the start na meron tayong um, enthalpy balance. And from that, um, we can obtain the value of Q, which is also equal to our S and then yung ating lambda S. Oops, di pala yun yung nakakopy. It's equal to the liquor. Okay? And then, the specific capacity of that liquor. And then, the temperature of the liquor. And then, minus the reference or datum temperature. And then, minus F. And then, we have the CP of the feed. 
if it's the feed then the feed and then we have um, T sub F and then of course the datum temperature so and then we add this um, V and then H sub V. Now you might be wondering why I will be using this. So um, di natin pwedeng i-disregard yung effect ng liquor na um, specific capacity as well as yung feed kasi they have different values. As what I've mentioned before, the problem specify that it depends on the concentration. So in this case, it depends upon the concentration. So with this, for our effect 1, we know quite well na ganito yung um, equation niya. It's just that uh, lagyan natin ng mga uh, proper designation if it's 1 or 2 or whatever. So in this case, that's the steam. And then this one is L1 uh, sub 1. Then we have the CP of L1. That's TL sub 1. And then we have the feed, CP of the feed. And then, okay. And then this one is V1 and then HV of 1. Okay, para mas malinaw. Ito kasi is more on general yun sa taas. Okay. So with this, um, let's try to substitute the values for s lambda s and then all of this okay and before before we do that pala um we need to find the value of our specific capacity and yung specific capacity natin to is makukuha natin based on sa ating assumption na meron tayong xl1 and xl2 so yun dito siya gagamitin natin okay so with this um our specific capacity of the feed uh, by the way yung feed kasi is um, 0.1 lang so using the formula from this given 4.18 minus 1.95 so yung feed lang naman natin is um, hindi actually siya mababago so I mean uh, hindi siya um, as assumed so substitute lang natin yung value na yun so it's like 4.18 minus 1.95 and then times 0 0.10 so we'll be able to get the value which is equal to 3.985 that's in 3.985 so that's in kilojoule per kilogram kelvin Okay, so that's the CP of the feed. And how about this liquor? So the specific capacity of the liquor is simply equal to the same concept. No, um, gawin lang natin is solve lang natin siya using um, the assumption which is 0.15. So in this case, we'll have, so we have 3.8875. That's kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, so knowing this, I will be substituting all the values no ating mga L ng ating mga CPL, TL, and then CPF, V1. Okay? Yan, fa fast forward ko tong mga video na to. Okay? Or i-skip ko na lang. Okay, so ito na yung atin for the first effect. Okay? And then I'll just do the same for the second effect. And by the way, um since it's the second effect na, so ang magiging um, final natin na equation, so from this one, iba alam naman natin na wala na siyang steam. Pero alam naman natin na yung steam na yun is the first vapor na nag-release sa first effect for the second effect. So, that would be lambda V and then, I mean, V1 times lambda V1 and then uh, mapapaltan lang to ng mga um, L2 natin, magiging CPL2, magiging TL din to 2 and then, siyempre, siyempre same day itong temperature. And then, this one, instead of having F, uh, so, ito na yung parang pumapasok dun mismo sa ating um, second effect. So, that would be L sub 1 instead. And then, CP L sub 1 and then minus T L sub 1 and then T O and then V2 and then we have H V sub 2. Okay? And from this, we need to find also the um, specific capacities kasi wala pa tayo for CP CP L sub 2. So, yun. Um... I'll be doing CPL sub 1 muna dito. Okay. So, yan. For CPL sub 2, uh, same uh, formula lang din gagamitin natin. Yung 4.18 minus 1.95. And then, we multiply that with our um, X. Which, in this case, in assume natin is 0.23. So, that is 3.7315. That's kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Okay. So, I'll just be copying this. So, I'll just be fast-forwarding the videos and then substitute all of this. Okay? Okay, so now that we have this, um, we know naman din uh, from this balance, we know that L sub 1 is always equal to L sub 2 plus V sub 2 because this is basically the overall material balance for the second effect alone. So, I'll be substituting um, this V sub 1 in terms of L sub, L sub 1 and L sub 2 and as well as this V sub 2 para meron lang tayong um, in terms of L sub 1. 
so with this um we have um for v sub one we know very well na this is the first vapor so um f sub one minus l sub one would be equal to v sub one but uh, we know that may value i think f sub one okay so finally we have this kind of expression in terms of l sub two and then l sub one and when you're computing for multiple effect evaporators you make sure na yung ating dulong expression is in terms of l sub one and l sub two para madali kayong magkaroon ng two equations to unknowns at the end okay so i'll be doing the same thing for v sub three so i'll just copy this because that's the general expression and then instead of v1 we have v sub 2 and then lambda sub 2 we have l sub 3 cpl3 and then tl3 then we have your tl l sub 2 cpl2 wherein yung ating l3 is my value na siya so yan ma medyo magkakaroon tayo na mas may value yung sagot ito sa ating v3 and then we also need to find cpl3 and by the way yung cpl3 natin is um hindi siya as assumed kasi meron actually tayong value for our um, x which is 0.5 okay so with this uh, i'll just be um, substituting all the values okay so finally we have this expression so medyo mahaba haba yung um pagta-type dito no but anyway uh, it's just um your common algebra uh, just substitute uh, this to the unknown and then kung meron value just substitute the value and then you'll be able to obtain this um, expression in terms of L sub 2 and L sub 1. The, in the third effect, you'll also be able to obtain this expression L sub 2 and L sub 1. So basically, ang nangyari lang dyan is you make your heat balance and then yung after ng heat balance na yun, equate natin siya dun sa kanyang um, um, equivalent na condensate times the vapor. So yun yung ating lambda S pagka sa first effect. Pero pag second effect, yun yung ating V1 and then lambda V1. So, pag nagawa nyo yun, equate nyo lang yun, and then use this um, overall material balance per effect. So, yun yung mangyari dyan. So, you just have to leave this L1 and then L2. Basta ang goal nyo lang is L sub 1 and L sub 2 lang yung matira dito sa ating material balance. Okay? So, hindi ko na siya tinipe ng isa isa kasi ang haba, medyo mahaba talaga yung recording. So, with this, knowing na meron tayong two equations, two unknowns, uh, let's just use your calculator para makompute yung ating value. So, una natin makakompute dyan is L sub 1 and then L sub 2. And then, after that, makakompute na natin lahat. V1, V2, and of course, yung V3, as well as the steam. Pero before we compute for the steam, let's have the area first kasi yung una natin, unang tinatanong. And then, di natin alam kung tama ba itong pinagagawa natin dito or hindi. And then, there's a way naman para malaman kung tama. Okay. So with this, L sub 1 is equal to, so L sub 1 is 10,153.688, that's kilojoule per kilogram. And then for L sub 2, what we get is 6526.8567 um, kilojoule per kilogram. Oh, sorry, that should be kilogram per R. Okay, and then... Then for V1, so yung V1 naman is madali lang. If you have L1, and then meron ka naman itong F1, so you just have to subtract them. So we have 13608, and then minus yung ating L sub 1. So you'll be able to obtain the value of your, um, of our V1. So we have 3454.312 3, 4, 5, 4. kilograms per hour. Lagyan natin ito ng 0. Okay, and then for our V2, since meron naman tayong L sub 1, doon natin susubrak yung ating L sub 2. So with this, the answer is 3626.8313 kilograms per hour. And then last one, we have V sub 3. Knowing naman na meron tayong L sub 3 and then meron tayong L sub 2, so copy nyo lang 6526.8567 and then subtract natin yung ating L sub 3. So what we'll be getting is V sub 3, which is 3805.8. 2567 kilograms per hour. Now, um, can you notice na itong V1, V2, V3 are very close to each other? And some books would actually recommend you to um, assume that the vapor at all um, effects are constant. So sometimes, um, pag ganun, mas nadi maging madali ang computation. But uh, you can only do that when the given or the problem is something like binigyan kayo ng um, equation wherein the boiling point rise is given in terms of the fraction of the 
fraction of the liquor. Kasi, imagine if you have the fraction, uh, for example, meron kayong BPR and then express siya in terms of X. Then, kagaya nung CP. So, in terms of, ano siya, fraction ng solution. So, di ba, it will be very easy if you would set all the vapor equal to each other. Kasi, kung, ma- kung makikita nyo dito sa summation ng V, dun sa una nating solution, this is actually the uh, vapor. So, just divide this by 3. And then, you'll be able to do all the balances and then this XL sub 1, XL sub 2. So, makukumpute nyo lahat, almost everything, dun sa assumption na yun. But, that is given kapag kayong ating boiling point rise is given in terms of X. So, it will be a lot easier. But, sabi ko nga, um, I want to show you the problem that will be um, the most complicated case in in evaporation. So, anyway, meron tayong L1, L2, V1, V2, V3. Now, let's try to find the area. And then, we know very well na yung area is compute natin based on sa equation na Q is equal to UA and then delta T. So, wala akong delta. Copy ulit ako ng delta. Okay. So, ito yung delta natin. So, that is QA over the QA delta T. And we know naman na kung ano yung um, effect na hinihingi natin. For example, it's Q1. Then, of course, yung Q1 natin is U1, I mean, U sub 1, and then area times delta T sub 1. So, yun lang siya. And then, Q2, Q3, Q4. Now, if um, the area is constant, there's no boiling point rise, and we know that the heat of dilution and heat of heat effects are negligible dun sa portion na yun. So, we could say that Q1 is always equal to Q2 equals Q3 and then equals to kung ilan mang effects yun. Kasi wala tayong boiling point rise. Eh. So basically, kung ano lang yung nagiging vapor and then kung ano yung nagiging change niya, yun lang din yung nagiging outlet. Um, I mean, yun lang din yung nagiging effect dun sa vapor natin kung saan mang effect siya pumapasok and then lalabas and papasok ulit. So ganun lang. Kaya equal siya. Pero in cases like this, when there is a boiling point rise, hindi natin siya pwede sabihin na equal kasi nagkakaroon tayo ng heat effects wherein yung vapor naging medyo superheated siya instead of just condensing right away. Okay. Parang ganun yung nangyayari. Anyway, so ito yung ating formula for Q. I mean, for uh, Q nga. So if we need the area, area sub 1, we know naman na pwede natin siyang masolve from this. Q equal to Q and then... Uh, let's just have this over u sub 1 and then this delta t. Diba? So, ganun lang siya kasimple. And um, from this, let's solve for our area. Now, um, you'll be noticing na yung ating q sub 1 is, um, yung s natin kasi is wala pa. Ano. Pero let's just leave it sa last na. And let's find q in a sense na hindi natin gagamitin yung ating s. Kasi hindi man talaga natin makukuha yan. Okay? Pag ginamit natin yung s, kasi wala pa tayong s. Dito natin siya gagamitin, diba? Q from this expression is this one. 409 point something. And then 204. So, compare natin yung Q dyan based on this expression. So, from that, Q would be equal to 409.4561 times L1. This is our L1. So, 101.53.6880. And then, we have minus 204.98. 204-9813.864 and then plus 2684.8333 and then that's V1 so times 3454.3120 okay so you'll be able to get um around 11 million 11 million that's in kilojoule per R okay so um we'll be converting this in terms of kilowatts para Maging tama naman siya sa paningin kasi medyo malaki-laki yung ating value pag million nilagay natin. So, let's convert it to kilowatts. So, we'll be able to get 3161.6465 and then we have kilowatts. Okay? So, same concept lang din for Q2. And then for Q2 naman, since medyo mas madali ito, we know naman na this one is V1. And then if we multiply V1 with our 2249.7, ito yung latent heat niya, diretso na tayo sa ating Q. So, we can get immediately the value of our Q2. So for our um, Q2, we have 2,158.6571. That's in kilowatts also. And then for our Q3, we have 2431.6647. That's in kilowatts. Okay. So equating this to its specific U, U1A, I mean UA delta T, so we'll be able to find the area. So, area sub 1 is equal to 
And by the way, since ang ating mga U is expressed in watts lang per meter squared Kelvin, so uh, divide nyo pa yan sa 1,000 bago kayo mag-substitute para tama yung inyong ano, value. And then yung delta T1, kukunin nyo siya dito sa ating mga nakuha before. So with this, you'll be able to obtain a value of 66.2376 meter squared sa... Um, First area, okay, so kompleta na yung ating mga areas and as you can see here, medyo magkakalayo sila. Um, knowing na yung ating area is kailangan magkakapareha, so meron tayong maling assumption na lang gawa. And if you would be taking the average of these three areas, you would know na um, this would be equal to 54.135 um, four. That's in meter squared. Okay, so uh, just to check if pwede applicable or pwede na yung ating sagot. Uh, if, you, uh, if your answer is less than 5% yung ating error and some books pa nga, minsan 10%, so okay na yun. Okay na yung sagot na yun. Just take the area of those um, three areas of the effect and then yun na yung magiging final answer. But in this case, hindi pa natin siya gawin. Pwede gawin kasi yung 66, uh, if we take the relative difference ng 66 na yun dun sa ating average, that will be around 22%. So, medyo malaki yan. So, we need to adjust. Okay? So, with that, we move on to trial 2. Okay? So, yun. Yung trial 1.